During the Civil War, many of Kentucky's mansions and plantation homes were taken over by the troops. In Simpson County, I visited Octagon Hall with its own Civil War stories. And I soon discovered that some of the home's past residents may want to actually help me tell those stories. Finished just before the outbreak of the Civil War, this eight-sided house, aptly named Octagon Hall, would write its own page in American history and lore. But it is a dark history. The house was completed in 1859. Its owner, Andrew Jackson Caldwell, was a Confederate sympathizer. As the Southern forces retreated from Bowling Green, Caldwell gave them shelter here. In fact, thousands of rebel soldiers camped on the grounds at Octagon Hall. At least two soldiers died here, one from battle wounds, and the other was found dead on the front steps of the home. His death remains a mystery. Both of those individuals are buried out beside the slave cemetery. Billy Bird is manager of what is now Octagon Hall Civil War Museum. The rooms in this house are filled with Civil War relics and other artifacts. The Octagon Hall uh, is on the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, it is a museum. We are open Wednesday through Saturday. But something else is going on here as well that has captured the attention of the national media. Supposedly, this is one of the most haunted places in America. We actually started having paranormal experiences from the first day we walked into the building. We came in and just started taking before and after shots to prepare for the restoration. And we started getting some strange anomalies on the photographs. Uh, we were actually hearing voices and, you know, I actually, I'm a big skeptic. I truly am. And, and we finally decided, oh, well, we're just hearing noises. We were hearing voices. We were hearing footsteps, that kind of thing through the house. One of the great tragedies of the house uh, to the family was the little girl, Mary Elizabeth. She was seven years old. She was playing in the winter kitchen downstairs uh, where they would cook throughout the wintertime to help heat the house and all that, uh, and started playing in the fire, probably with a poker. Uh, she, but the problem was she got too close, and either an ember popped out onto her dress or her dress swung into the flame. It ignited, and uh, it was devastating. She, she received these terrible burns, uh, enough that it was fatal to her. I have seen the apparition of a little girl twice. Paranormal teams and ghost hunting TV shows have come here from all across the country. Investigators say Octagon Hall is extremely active. I do work with a team called Wolfpack Paranormal based out of Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And uh, we've investigated uh, Octagon Hall uh, several times. This place is, has a special love for me. Uh, I love it to death. Um, it's got great history, it's a beautiful place, and it's always active. We have captured several electronic voice uh, phenomena, uh, EVPs. Uh, we have caught uh, full spirit apparitions, and uh, we also believe that we have a picture of a uh, Civil War soldier going in towards the kitchen as the back part of it. It's a paranormal dream. We call it Old Faithful. I don't think it's because a tremendous amount of people died here. I think it's because the, the souls that still walk these halls are more active than other places. Still camera shots from investigators and tourists have supposedly captured apparitions. On numerous occasions, as paranormal teams talked among themselves, something else was picked up on their digital sound recorders. Always the same little girl's voice. That has convinced me more than anything else because I'm with the teams. I know we have no small children in the house, and yet we'll pick up a small child saying mommy or 
will you play with me or I see you, this kind of thing. Keith Fournier of the Night Stalkers Paranormal Team is preparing his equipment for a ghost hunt in Octagon Hall. His kit contains all sorts of sensitive recorders, meters, and other devices. The, the electrical charge placed to it, so you can put it in a hallway, it'll glow a certain color. If something walks by it, it'll turn a different color. Our team would join him for a late night search of the home. Behind me is videographer and producer Frank Simconis. And photographer Steve Schaefer is running the night vision camera. As we began, I remained very skeptical of any sort of paranormal activity. Then Keith set up several flashlights that he says the spirits use to communicate through. They went on and off in response to his questions. Our whole crew was there. Mary Elizabeth, if you're up here with us, sweetie, remember when we played hide and go seek one night? If you want to do that again, oh, there we go. Or, or turn that one back on if you'd like. Thank you. We saw it with our own eyes. I got, you. I got it. Then as I walked from room to room, I became more engaged. But how could this be happening? Are there really ghosts? Age-old questions about the afterlife raced through my head. And why would an innocent little girl remain here forever in the rooms of this house? As the evening progressed into the wee hours, we saw something that none of us will ever forget. As we entered the room where Mary Elizabeth played by the fireplace, a heavy cast iron spoon was moving by itself. Absolutely, that's shaking. Mary Elizabeth, if it's you, will you touch the light? Thank you. In the darkness by the fireplace, I felt a sensation that's hard to describe, and the meter I was holding began to register. Look at this thing. I left Octagon Hall with new questions, questions that have kept me awake at night in the days and weeks since I produced this story. And I wonder when I will sleep again. From the elaborate Beaux art style of the Hopewell Museum, to the simple one-room schoolhouse in Fredonia, to the eight sides of Octagon Hall and the Western Lodge look of Eagles View B&B, we've really seen a variety of architecture, both past and present in tonight's show. Kentucky is full of contrasts and wonders. We hope you'll join us again so we can show you more of them right here on Kentucky Life. Watch Kentucky Life online anytime at KET.org. For a DVD 